Hey everybody, Jennifer Blevins-Smith here with Integral Clinic Solutions and you're watching my YouTube channel, Navigating the Business of Medicine. Today we're going to talk about CLIA, what CLIA exactly is, and what's the difference between a CLIA certification and a CLIA waiver. You may have heard the term CLIA before, or maybe you're very well versed in CLIA, CLIA waivers, and CLIA certifications, but I'm just doing a really brief video to put out there for my followers to have a strong knowledge base about this. I just want to do a little bit of my disclaimers, if you will. I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a CPA, and I'm not a professional in this area by any means, but I do encourage you to check with your state's requirements for CLIA, also where you would fill out the application for a CLIA waiver or a CLIA certificate. Some places you have to go to the CMS website itself, other times it's regulated through your local state authority and then they communicate it to CMS and Health and Human Services. So in Oregon, we go to Oregon Health Authority website and they have an application and they have someone that processes them locally and then they communicate with HHS. So just find out what your locality requires before moving forward. Also, you'll wanna check with your vendors of who will be giving you any kind of point of care testing to find out if they require any kind of CLIA waiver or CLIA certificate to make sure you're in compliance. Now, what is CLIA? CLIA is an acronym, C-L-I-A, and it's a Clinic Laboratory Improvement Amendment. This happened in 1988, and it was a law that started requiring any facilities that were performing examinations of human specimens, so blood, urine, tissue, anything like that, for the purposes of diagnosis, prevention, or treatment to be certified by Health and Human Services. And they did this, my understanding is to make sure that no matter where things are being processed with certain points of care kits, that they're being done consistently so that there aren't variable results or people aren't being held to the standards that they should be to ensure that people are not getting false negatives or false positives or having any kind of negative influence to their overall care that they're being provided. Now, like I said, you'll wanna check with like your McKesson rep or your uh, rep who supplies these if you buy them directly from the supplier and find out if each individual test is either CLIA certified required or if it's CLIA waived. CLIA waived is what I'm used to the most and these include like glucose finger prick testing, urinalysis dips, urine pregnancy tests, rapid streps, rapid flus, those kinds of things. Now with technology growing and things developing, there's even more CLIA wave tests that you could have in your office and you will get certain analyzers that can accept certain cassettes to run different tests. So you could have an analyzer that can run a CMP and a BMP or another analyzer that can do COVID, flu, and RSV all together to differentiate. Or you can have one that does HIV rapid or GC and chlamydia, which is gonorrhea and chlamydia. So there's some new ones now, but you definitely wanna check with the manufacturer. When you're ready to apply for either your CLIA certificate or your CLIA waiver, there's a special form and you will get the form wherever your specific state requires you to go through. So in Oregon, it's the Oregon Health Authority. I think in Washington, it's the public health website. And then there's other people that have to go through CMS but it will ask you all this information about the owner of the practice, the specialties of the practice, contact information, but they also want you to list every point of care testing you will be doing or every test you will be doing in your office and it will ask for certain information like manufacturer, what's the type, what's the specimen, that kind of stuff. So make sure you have that all ready for you or you're not going to be able to complete the application. In general, it doesn't take very long for the application to be processed once you complete it and submit it, and then you have to pay the fee. I believe the fee is every other year, and it's about $150, I think, right now. And once you pay and they accept your application for what it is, they will send you either the certificate for CLIA if you have more advanced testing in your clinic, 
or they will send you the CLIA waiver certificate. And these have to be hung in your lab area of your clinic. So if you ever have an inspection, they will see that you've done your due diligence and you're approved through HHS to be performing the point of care tests you're offering to your patients. When you apply for a Medicare or Medicaid contracting and credentialing, they might also ask you for your CLIA waiver or your CLIA certificate number, so have that ready as well. And I would store that number in a place where you keep your tax ID number, your group MPI numbers, all your individual provider MPI information, because that's going to be a number you're going to have to reference and just having it all in one spot is kind of a good idea. I think I've covered everything. The most important thing is do your due diligence, find out where you get the application and submit it through for your location and also find out from your reps who are selling you the point of care testing if it's a CLIA certified required test or a CLIA waiver will work for you. Don't do anything you're not approved of because you would hate to get in trouble and have those repercussions brought onto you. I don't wish that onto anybody. I don't know exactly what happens, but I know it's not good, so just don't put yourself in that situation. Thank you so much for listening. If you have any other information you'd like to provide regarding this topic, put it in the comments below. Hit the thumbs up button if you learned something or you feel this was valuable in any way. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you hit the bell icon that's there, it will notify you when I release new videos. Thank you so much. I appreciate the support and have a wonderful day.